What makes something a classic? Classics stand the test of time as being the highest quality, most iconic, or earliest refined editions of their kind. You might describe classics as distinguished, quintessential, notorious, and the standard. And innovations beyond these classics are almost always in conversation with them and often can't help but reference them. Now, what would make something a modern classic? First, we'll decode what this means in the motorcycle world, but then I'd like to bring it into the broader landscape of the modern classic culture. In terms of motorcycles, a modern classic is a bike built to replicate and emulate the look of an old classic motorcycle, but with modern mechanics. These are designed with the look, feel, and nostalgia factor that we want from 20th century motorcycles, but upgraded with the amenities and safety features that a contemporary rider expects. So what bikes even are considered classics? This is up for debate, but I'd say almost no one would deny that Vincent motorcycles are classic, Norton Commandos are classic. I'd argue that in the realm of Harley, panheads, knuckleheads, sportsters even, so long as they don't have too many of those bells and whistles that you expect from a 21st century bike. The Royal Enfield Bullet is another classic and really arguably all of their lineups are classics. They even have a Royal Enfield Classic. So as we've discussed, classics stand the test of time and this is with good reason. Maybe there was a lot of integrity in the original design of something. Maybe something became so iconic through pop culture or through mass adoption by the people who used it. Maybe something has become a classic because of just a broad media push. The people who gravitate towards these are a little bit nostalgic but they're real about the limitations of the original production methods, safety regulations, XYZ involved in the original making of um, these products. For example, old Hollywood has a lot of glamor, it has a lot of appeal, and there were a lot of classic films made during that era, but there was tons of worker exploitation. There were tons of people excluded from things. There's a lot of censorship. There's a lot of things that couldn't be included despite these things being considered classics. So you might be more attracted to a modern classic sentiment when it comes to film because you want the core, the storytelling, maybe the whimsy, the movie magic of the classics, but with a contemporary lens where some topics aren't off limits and some people aren't excluded from being in these films. Maybe new stories are being told that we didn't have access to back then, but we still wanna emulate the feel of a classic. So there is a type of value system that permeates the modern classic, and it's often a value of restraint. This can be related to digital minimalism and the understanding that not all progress is necessarily necessary and good and ideal, and some innovations should be more slowly adopted or more skeptically considered before they're incorporated into the design or the widespread acceptance of a technology. In his book, Digital Minimalism, Cal Newport proposes a philosophy of technology that I think a lot of modern classic motorcyclists adopt when it comes to bikes. This philosophy of technology use lands you somewhere between a neo-Luddite and a quantified self-enthusiast. Neo-Luddites, as the term would suggest, support the abandonment of most new technologies. While quantified self-enthusiasts integrate technology into almost all aspects of life where it's relevant, they can sometimes be considered more techno-maximalists and see pretty much any benefit as a reason for pursuing the adoption of a new technology. Now, a digital minimalist would land somewhere in between these two ideas. They will carefully select the technologies that they adopt and gladly miss out on the things that seem to be more harm than good in the long run, or the costs majorly outweigh the benefits when it comes to maybe distraction, visual appeal, or simply an overcomplication of a process that should be quite simple. In the case of modern classic motorcycles, this is usually more of an aesthetic preference over a functional one. We would hate to go without some of the contemporary braking systems that we have for the sake of just the feel of an older bike. I don't yearn for the days of drum brakes. 
Although now that there are all of these large screen displays being introduced to the vast majority of new motorcycles, there's both a philosophical and aesthetic reason as to reject this new technology. For me personally, I don't want to be evoking a screen while I'm on a motorcycle. Half the benefit of being on there is being away from the ever-present digital screens, flashing lights in our eyeballs, and proving to be distractions more often than not. But of course, the visual displays are very much a tool and you could get a lot of benefit from using the map navigation, seeing digital readings that you might not have before, but ultimately these are extraneous to the act of operating the motorcycle and they're not absolutely essential when it comes to the features necessary to have a safe and reliable bike. When it comes to modern classics, there's of course that nostalgia factor for 20th century design and ultimately a reverence for the original creative concepts of these products. This ends up being both a philosophy of an experience of motorcycling and where the pleasure is derived from. Is it from all these bells and whistles or is it from getting on two wheels and going? So a lot of modern classics are willing to sacrifice a bit of speed, a bit of aerodynamics, and a lot of those extraneous gauges and sensors in favor of a more simplified and traditional experience of riding a motorcycle. So what's your relationship with adopting these new technologies and where do you land and where do you draw the line on which ones you expect to see on your bike and what you wanna see in the future? I know, like I said, these screens just have a negative association for me. And even my era right now, um, my bike has a type of screen. It's more of, I call it the Tamagotchi screen or like a 90s pixel screen than it is a high resolution TFT, LCD, LMNOP display. I see the values of them. However, it's just not my preference for what I wanna see on my bike. I'm the type of person who doesn't even listen to music while they ride. Unless I'm traveling, I'm not really trying to look at navigation either. I'd much rather write down the directions on a scrap of paper and tape them to my bike than I would like to listen thing listen to things in my ear. Granted, for the most part, I think that you can easily be completely immersed in the ride regardless of the presence of these screens and extra features. You're certainly not detracting from your experience of riding. There's no wrong way to do this so long as you're doing it safely. But I'd love to hear what you have to say. Go ahead and let me know in the comments. My name is Megan Stark. I don't think I mentioned that. And if you'd like to see more from me, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. That's all I have on the Modern Classic Beat. And until next time, ride safe.